Since we didn't get to the anti-gout medications, I'd like to take some time to cover those briefly. We did, you will find this in the NSAID chapter, chapter 44. So let's get started. What is gout? Well, gout is a condition that results from the inappropriate uric acid metabolism. It's an inflammatory response and it can be because of an under-excretion of uric acid or an overproduction of uric acid. You'll have high levels of uric acid in the blood, that's called hyperuricemia, and also you can have high levels of the uric acid in other body fluids, including the synovial fluid. Although hyperuricemia is essential for the development of gout, it's not the only factor that leads to gout. Other factors include age, it's actually rare before age of 30, but it can occur in certain situations. For example, in patients who have uh, problems because they're doing chemotherapy and they're young and they have kidney issues that are not allowing the excretion of the uric acid. There's also a genetic predisposition. It's an X-linked alteration of the enzyme hyposanthine guanine phosphobiosyle transferase or HGPRT. It also can occur in excessive alcohol consumption and obesity. It used to be known as the rich man's disorder because of the rich food, foods and the alcohol. It can be a result of certain drugs, especially the thiazides and diuretics. It's also prevalent in lead toxicity. So when uric acid concentration is greater than 6.8 milligrams per deciliter in the body fluids, or any fluids, it crystallizes and it forms insoluble precipitates. And so what happens is those little crystals are then deposited into the connective tissues throughout the body. This crystallization in the synovial fluid causes an acute painful inflammation in the joint. It's often seen in the great toe. And it triggers this inflammatory response by the macrophages. So they form this protein scaffolding and that scaffolding then causes all of this joint damage. And that's what's known as gouty arthritis. Now, there are two methods of treating gout because the acute flare or the acute gouty arthritis needs to be treated differently than what we call the interval treatment. That's where the gout will subside and then reappear, which can be a few days later or even years later. This is an atrophy, uh, excuse me, an arthropathy and so it's a nociceptive pain. I know you've been studying pain in LVN 121. So this is an example of nociceptive pain. So the two aspects to the treatment of gout are when we have an acute attack. You'll see a medication called Colchris or Colchicine, but it's an older medicine. We'll talk about it in a few minutes. More frequently, you're going to see endomethacin ordered, NSAIDs, or a corticosteroid. With our hyperuricemia, without an acute attack, in those times that are in between, those intervals, we'll see medications allopurinol, febixostat, probenicid, and sulfapriazone. So the indications of the allopurinol or those medications for the interval are to prevent the acid from getting there in the first place. So allopurinol, also called xyloprim, is what we call a xanthine inhibitor. And what it does is it decreases the uric acid in the serum by inhibiting the uric acid synthesis. You'll see that in this diagram here. The probenicid and the um, sulfampyrazone are called uricosuric drugs. And what they do is they actually work to reduce the serum urate concentration by 
increasing the renal excretion. And they do this by also inhibiting the reabsorption of the uric acid in the kidney. So more of it is excreted. These medicines are actually ineffective in the treatment of acute gouty attacks and can actually precipitate an attack in early in the course of the treatment for the hyperuricemia. Actually, hyperuricemia. <laughs> so we have another medication that's used for interval. That's Febuxostat or Euloric. Now, this is a non purine selective inhibitor of xanthine oxidase. It's more selective for xanthine oxidase than allopurinol is, but it isn't used as often. And that's because it has a great big black box warning that it may pose a greater risk of cardiovascular event than allopurinol. Our anti gout medication other than the corticosteroids, the NSAIDs, and the indomethacin, is the colchicine. Now, this medication works as an, it's an older drug, but it is still used because we do have patients who cannot take NSAIDs. So it reduces inflammatory response to the deposits of the urate crystals in the joint tissue. It's used for very short-term management or the prevention of gout. It can cause short-term leukopenia and bleeding into the gastrointestinal or urinary tracts. And diarrhea and cramping are pretty predictable with therapeutic doses of this medication, which is one of the reasons that it's fallen out of favor and that we use more of the endomethacin, the um, corticosteroids, or the NSAIDs. Our assessments that we're going to do for this patient include making sure that they have good hydration, that we've got baseline serum uric acid levels, we're monitoring urine output and kidney function, as well as liver function. And then for euloric, we want to make sure that they don't have a pre-existing cardiovascular disease. Our patient education will include avoiding weight bearing on the involved joint during the acute attacks, reducing their weight if overweight, avoiding alcohol and foods that are rich in purines, and then increasing consumption of low fat dairy products, cherries, soybeans, and vegetable sources of protein, because those can greatly reduce the recurrent gouty episodes. As always, if you have questions, you know how to reach me. See you soon.